the boob doctor. Samuel was so fond of boob, he became a boob doctor one day. When he was all grown up and all grown up. Vince Vaughn lives. Holla. Thank you very much. Growing up, Samuel would suck mama's boobs dry after he turned his parents' bed into a 24-7 open milk bar. One time, one time, it got weird because his big sister was in his parents' bed when he said, booby, only for his big sister to lift her shirt up and say, psych, April Fool's Day, Samuel, before pulling her nighty shirt immediately back down, before her younger brother could punch her nipple dot into bruised ones. Big sister was only nine, so she had no lumbering boobs weighing down her structurally damaged vertebrae from massive overextension already. Although, if she did opt to get breast reduction surgery when she got older for some selfish, stupid reason, like mild back pain discomfort from bending over on clay courts in Florida in Palm Beach from playing tennis too long, chances are it wouldn't be a huge load off her shoulders if she filled out on top even less than mama did. Can I get a holla for titty shaming my wife and my future pubescent filled out daughter, but not so much. I think you catch it just at this point. Holla. Thank you very much. Baby Samuel, otherwise known as Chosen Curls, was bound to woo would hold up one of his sister's naked Barbies on occasion and ask his dear Dada, do you think she's hot, Dada? And Dada would say, by Southern Belle standards, I give her a 7.3. Although, if she lived in the East Village of Manhattan these days, I give her a solid 9 because she'd be taller than most of the munchkin gals off St. Mark's who you could never mount standing up in your wildest dreams. Unless you held them up high against the wall like Jerry Maguire does with Kelly Preston and Jerry Maguire, which your do-it-all dad is too putsy to pull off if you really need to know. Cameron Crowe lives. Holla. Thank you very much. Baby Samuel was always fascinated with his dad's human anatomy book, which he got. So his kids would have an easier time coming up with funny sounding body parts whenever they played Mad Libs together. Anus Hole, being a made-up body part name that became their go-to personal favorite. Come rain or shine, Frank Sinatra lives. Holla, thank you very much. Baby Samuel always wanted his daddy to show him where he came from in Mama's vagina. As he constantly implored his dear dada, show me where I used to live in Mama's vagina back in the day when I used to sip booby milk through her umbilical cord. Look who's talking lives. Holla. Thank you very much. Now, baby Samuel is the boob doctor with a big pimpin' plastic surgery office in Miami Beach about to consult a 39-year-old exotic dancer, Buttercup, who's got a whole lot of loving on top of her. Buttercup, Buttercup, a oh, lot of... Motorboat Buttercup. Holla. Thank you very much. Buttercup was there. But he to meet with the boo doctor. Samuel. Chosen Curls was about to woo about a potential breast reduction surgery. Buttercup wears a tight white sweater and cheap sunglasses to her appointment with the boob doctor as she examines various frame degrees on the wall before the boob doctor Samuel Cornbluth enters. And let's not forget how scrumptious she looked in those cheap sunglasses. ZZ Top lives. Holla. Thank you very much. The boob doctor Samuel Cornbluth enters his office and Buttercup's nipples begin to jingle. With nervous trepidation. SAT. Power words live. Ah, Thank you very much. Dr. Cornblue taps her shoulder ever so gently. Which sends shivers of tintillating tingles up and down her spine like never before. And she broke in Lexington Steel during his pulverized 
his way to the top years for Vivid Entertainment. Holla! Thank you very much! Now, Dr. Cornbluth says, so, my tennis partner, Dr. Ken, told me he doesn't want you dancing at Senior Tata's in South Beach anymore. Buttercup says, he's very possessive, Dr. Ken, of my glittery, busty beauties. But that's not why I'm here, Dr. Cornbluth. You see, I read on the internet how breast reduction surgery causes scars, and I was wondering why any woman would be willing to risk damaging their natural beauties the way God intended them to be. Also, Dr. Cornblue, do you ever feel like a perverted Dr. Frankenstein for playing the role of Nip Tuck God by picking off where he left off? Mary Shaw lives! Holla! Thank you very much! I was a double major in philosophy and English at the University of Florida, in case you're wondering. Dr. Cornblue says, I'm confused, Buttercup. I thought you came here for a breast reduction surgery consultation. But it sounds like you've made up your mind already. I'm still getting paid by the hour, so I don't give a shit. Especially knowing how I get to glance at your luscious lobes of perfection jiggle with anticipation in my presence. I have that impact on all my female patients, except the hardcore dykes, but they normally have nothing to flaunt and hide under their natty-looking dress sweaters for a reason. Bob Mueller lives! Ah, thank you very much! Buttercup says, I do play plenty of tennis in my downtime with Dr. Ken, and I have noticed a slight strain on my back as of late Dr. Cornblue. Plus, I own a hot pink Range Rover, my own boat, and a condo with high ceilings and fancy fuck bags made of shaggy futon and the fancy... Arts District of Miami. So I've gotten plenty of ROI out of my gorgeous gals on top. I just want to know what love feels like without my gorgeous busting beauties being the centerpiece force field which dominates every man's universe. Dr. Cornblue says, like Kanye West said, on an album I'm not remembering the name of. Bound to You. That's the name of the song. Like Kanye West says. I'm bound to you. I think one good girl is worth a thousand bitches. With depleted tits on top. Making them half the woman they used to be. Bam. Kanye West lives. Holla. Thank you very much. Buttercup says. You mangled that Kanye West line a bit, Doc. I heard your message loud and clear. Buttercup stands up erect, pulls down her cheap sun glasses ever so slightly and says, I wouldn't trade in your posh Miami Beach office for a shitbox in Park Slope, Brooklyn either, Doc. New York is so yesterday's news.